Today, we will be focusing on the life and career of Keller Brimwell Breland and his IQ Zoo. Keller Brimwell Breland was born on March 26, 1915 in Poplarville, Mississippi. His father was a Methodist minister and his mother was an elementary school teacher. He was said to be a very inquisitive and resourceful child and was an entrepreneur from a young age. He graduated from Copia Lincoln High School and Junior College in 1933, and in 1937 he received his Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi. He would then go on to earn his Master's Degree in Psychology from Louisiana State University in 1939. In the 1940s, Keller Breland began his doctoral program in Industrial Psychology at the University of Minnesota. This is where he would go on to meet his wife, Marion Ruth Cruz, who he married in 1941. It seems as if animals were destined to be the focus of their careers from the beginning, given that their first encounter involved Marion literally running into Keller after being bitten by a laboratory rat. They would go on to have three children together, Bradley, who was born in 1946, Francis, born in 1948, and Elizabeth, their last child, who was born in 1952. During their time at the University of Minnesota, Keller and Marion were both students studying under B.F. Skinner. Interestingly, though, the two were actually researchers on the World War II project entitled Pigeons and a Pelican, but more widely referred to as Project Pigeon. Project Pigeon was Skinner's attempt to develop a pigeon-controlled guided bomb in order to assist the war efforts. Granted, the project was canceled on October 8, 1944 because the military believed that further attempting to advance this eccentric project was delaying other projects that had more immediate promise of combat application. This is where Keller witnessed firsthand the power behind operant methods to train animals to perform complex behaviors. Keller strongly believed that he and Marion could make a stable and honest living using operant methods to train animals. With this being said, Keller and Marion Breland made the decision to leave the University of Minnesota against the advice of Skinner and other colleagues and began the first commercial application of operant conditioning in Mound, Minnesota. Their business would be called Animal Behavior Enterprises, or ABE for short. They would both leave the University of Minnesota without completing their doctoral degrees. A classmate of theirs, Paul Meal, went on to bet $10 that their business venture would fail. In a $10 check dated in 1961, hung framed from Marion's office wall for many years to come. Pictured as the original farm for animal behavior enterprises in Mound, Minnesota, where the Brelands would begin their long careers in animal training. In 1947, the Brelands were offered their first contract with General Mills Incorporated to train animals for farm feed promotions. General Mills requested a handful of animals, including the egg-laying chicken, the piano-playing chicken, and the dancing chicken, along with trained hogs. With the commercial success and growth of their small farm in Mount Minnesota, along with Keller's hatred of cold weather, the Brelands bought a large farm in Garland County, Arkansas, right outside of Hot Springs in 1950. The location of their new and improved farm was in a centralized location, had easy access to railroads, which was important for shipping animals across the United States, and had access to the booming Hot Springs tourist business. This proved wildly beneficial for their future ventures. Five short years after their move from Mound, Minnesota to Garland County in Arkansas, the Brelands opened up the IQ Zoo, which would become the most influential commercial attraction of operantly conditioned animals. The IQ Zoo opened in 1955 at 380 Whittington Avenue in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and was later moved to 422 Central Avenue. The zoo served as an introduction to operant conditioning for many future professionals in the field of psychology. It featured a showcase of animals who were trained by the Brelands to perform in a variety of anthropomorphic settings. It also served as a training facility for individuals who worked as animal trainers and wanted to learn under the Brelands. Keller Breland believed and swore by operant training methods being a means to revolutionize animal training methods to be more effective, efficient, and humane. 
This view was quite ahead of the times in which animal training relied on inconsistent methods and punishment. He spent a great amount of time advocating for his work and emphasizing that the animals in his care were neither punished nor mistreated. At one point, the IQ Zoo was rated as one of the most popular roadside tourist attractions of the 20th century by the History Channel. At their busiest points during their careers, the Breelands would train over 1,000 animals at any given time. Some of the most popular acts at the IQ Zoo in Hot Springs were chickens that danced to music from the jukebox, played baseball, walked tight ropes, and dispensed souvenirs and fortune cards to zoo guests. The zoo also housed raccoons that played basketball, ducks that played pianos and drums, and rabbits that rode fire trucks and sounded the sirens. The popularity of the Breland's IQ Zoo led to an abundance of work in the commercial animal training industry, and their work also attracted trainers from all over the country. And in the 1950s, the Breelands developed the first operant-based marine mammal and bird shows in the country. They developed shows for Marine Land of the Pacific, Marine Studios, Parrot Jungle, SeaWorld, and Six Flags. Although this line of work is rather controversial today, it is still regarded as a traditional form of entertainment. The success and longevity of animal training programs at most theme parks and oceanariums today is attributed to the work of Keller and Marion Breland. Not only did the Brelands have great commercial success with their product of operant conditioning as a profitable way to sell animal training services, they also received astonishing news coverage. They have appeared on numerous television programs with their animals, such as Ed Sullivan, Dave Garraway, Jack Parr, Steve Allen, Zoo Parade, You Asked For It, and Industry on Parade. Their work with animal training has also been documented in written news outlets, such as Time, Reader's Digest, The Wall Street Journal, and Life. Although the Breelands did not consider themselves academics, they were still a part of a handful of psychological associations, including the American Psychological Association. They also did not contribute to psychological literature as frequently as someone who was a true professional of the field. Granted, a few years prior to Keller Breland's death, he and Marion would go on to publish their most famous academic work entitled The Misbehavior of Organisms. This 1961 article was a play on B.F. Skinner's 1938 book entitled The Behavior of Organisms. The article was published in response to odd behaviors exhibited by conditioned animals. Although it received backlash for somewhat countering the father of operant conditioning's views, it provided great insight into the behavior anomalies of animals even after having been conditioned to portray a specific behavior. The animal responses to a conditioned behavior violated the law of least effort in which they drug out the process of the conditioned behavior although there was nothing that forced them to do so, and they also exerted way more effort than was required to receive a reward. To sum up the explanation of the observed behavior anomalies of the animals at the IQ Zoo, Keller and Marion Breland wrote in The Misbehavior of Organisms that it can easily be seen that these particular behaviors to which the animals drift are clear-cut examples of instinctive behaviors having to do with the natural food-getting behaviors of the particular species. It seems obvious that these animals are trapped by strong instinctive behaviors, and clearly we have here a demonstration of the prepotency of such behavior patterns over those which have been conditioned. We have termed this phenomenon instinctive drift. In a very boiled down, simplified form, it might be stated as learned behavior drifts toward instinctive behavior. After 14 years of continuous conditioning and observation of thousands of animals, it is our reluctant conclusion that the behavior of any species cannot be adequately understood, predicted, or controlled without knowledge of its instinctive patterns, evolutionary history, and ecological niche. Moreover, as we have recently discovered, if one begins with evolution and instinct as the basic format for the science, a very illuminating viewpoint can be developed which leads naturally to a drastically revised and simplified conceptual framework of startling explanatory power. This work has been recognized as a milestone in the history of psychology. Four short years after the publication of The Misbehavior of Organisms, Keller Brumwell Breland passed away on June 17, 1965 in Hot Springs, Arkansas at the age of 50 from a heart attack. He is buried in Wesson, Mississippi. Although Keller Breland never received a doctoral degree in the field of psychology, he is widely respected for his work in operant conditioning and his training methods are still utilized today. 
1966, one year after his death, Mary and Breland published their last piece of work together, a textbook entitled Animal Behavior. This publication was documentation of their work together and brought their research to the attention of the world. In the preface of the textbook, Marion described Keller as the dreamer and herself as the engineer. He had all of the ideas and she implemented them. Marion Breland, later known as Marion Bailey, would continue working with animals for the rest of her career and would even go on to finally finish her Ph.D. in 1978 at the University of Arkansas in experimental psychology. Twelve years later, in 1990, the IQ Zoo closed its doors. Although many have attempted to replicate and open similar attractions to the infamous IQ Zoo, they all have failed. The Breland's commercial venture spanned over four decades, and their impact is still apparent in modern-day tourist attractions across the country. The remaining artifacts from Animal Behavior Enterprises are housed at the Archives of the History of American Psychology in Akron, Ohio.